This is perhaps one of the cheapest flying surfboard setups you can make. It's got a $50 Amazon motor and some cheap lipos. However, can we make it cheaper and DIY the whole thing? Let's go to the pass. First things first, I'm gonna carve those swing out of this piece of wood. Get the grinder wheel, dish it out. Now we're gonna fiberglass it. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll also probably need an actual surfboard thing too. So we'll just carve some foam up, fiberglass this too. I've actually never really seen one of these things, so I'm just kinda just making up as I go. I mean, it's really just an underwater airplane, right? Put some metal bits, put the stabilizer on here. I'm just gonna fold the sheet metal over and fill it full of expanding foam. All right, check it out. I got the homemade one done, but I'm hoping what I know about aerodynamics will pay off and hopefully this thing does work. It's time to ride one of these things. I've actually never really rode one of these things. We're going to try pulling this thing behind the boat because I don't want to install the electric setup just yet. <laughs> it turns out I'm actually a complete amateur at this. So bad that we never actually figured out if I can ride an actual surfboard. Let's buy a commercial setup because Maybe this DIY thing is not really my speed, considering I don't know what I'm doing yet. It's weird. This thing kind of sucks. And doing more research, I don't think anyone actually has flown this configuration. I have some reasons why this thing doesn't work, but maybe I'll cover them in a future video where I fully design a working foil. So for now, I'm going to give up. I, I don't think this is quite working. That was good. That was good. These foil boards are really hard to surf, but you know what is not hard to surf? The internet, thanks to Opera GX, our sponsor for this video. Opera GX is a browser that's free to download that's tailored towards gamers. However, in my case, I do a lot of system intense processes such as CAD work, and it's important to have a browser that's not using up all of my valuable resources. This browser even has GX control. It controls how much RAM and CPU your browser is trying to steal while you're trying to do important work, like gaming or CAD in my case. Even in Task Manager, you can see just how much of your computer it's using compared to Chrome. The neat thing about Opera GX is it allows you to really customize your experience. And to do this, there's a mod section that you can download various mods to your personal taste. You can even add a bunch of weird sound effects and stuff for whatever you like, for closing out windows or opening new windows. Look, I customized my browser. It even runs on shape. The CAD program I used to design the foldable parts really well in the browser. But there's one really, really important thing about this advertisement that I'm trying to show you guys. It has a built-in ad blocker that you don't need to download. Check. So now you're watching this ad. However, if you're on Opera GX, you don't have to watch the video ad in the beginning of this video, the mid-roll ads, and the end-roll ads, and anyone else's ads, because it's purely built into the browser. So what are you waiting for? Download Opera GX using my link in the description, which really helps support this channel and have an easier time surfing the web today, unlike me surfing the surfboard. I just got back from open sauce and got a tour of San Francisco. However, I also got to check out this cool hydrofoil company and I even got to try hydrofoil board, but there's no footage of that. I thought about actually purchasing one of these boards, but when I saw the price tag, I completely threw up inside my mouth. Turns out most of these electric full board setups go for about 8,000 on the cheapest to about 15,000, which is the one I rode. Completely insane. I, I don't, I honestly don't really know why they're this expensive, but I definitely want to make my own because I think I can do it for probably less than a thousand bucks. <laughs> what do you think, Toby? <laughs> First thing we need to do, grab an Amazon motor. 6374 skateboard motor, I think this is gonna work. Compare that with a $70 speed controller, $200 worth of lipos, and kaboom, you got yourself a spinny bit inside a duck. Check it out, Einstein, look at this thing. Look at this dog. Look at this other dog that people have commented about that I haven't shown in all the videos. Next thing I need to do is adapt this to this surfboard thing I got. Now, I'm an amateur at this, so I don't really know if I should bolt this to the ones I built, so I'm going to buy the slingshot foil thing, which seems to be very generic, cheap, surfboard option. This is about a thousand bucks. Cha-ching. <laughs> Still kind of expensive, but not nearly as expensive as electric foil board. Let's try it. this audio is turning out but it actually flies that's totally amazing it definitely helps that i got some past experience trying this because i actually got it up on foil first you kind of ride it on your knees when you learn how to do this 
figure out where the balance is because you're basically flying on a small carbon fiber airplane, which is fascinating to think about. You're controlling all of it with your weight shifting, making the plane more nose heavy to keep it down in the water or just leaning back to move the center of gravity back and kind of increase a little bit more lift and change the angle of attack and get it flying. Really wild how it works and you gotta like lean left and right. It's really hard, honestly. It's like really hard. It's working. <laughs> all in all, it worked pretty well. I think we gotta get a bigger board for more buoyancy because this is definitely not gonna cut it. This seems to be a winning design. It works all right. Enough thrust just to kind of barely move me along and get up on foil. So I will take that as a win. Keep it going, keep it going, keep riding it. <laughs> Too much, you stalled. <laughs> So I got contacted by this cool company called Foil Lab. I guess they're working on some DIY electric foil surfboard kits so you can DIY this thing yourself. Obviously, I wasn't going to say no. I'm, I'm going to take one of these things because I, I want to try it out. Can I do like a complete DIY setup for really cheap or like a DIY buy setup? I actually don't know the price point of this thing yet. I think it's still a prototype. I present to you the world's dumbest way to waterproof electronics. We have a candle, we have a torch, we have a fan, and we have electronics. Another quick thing we're going to do here is I need to keep this box dry. So I've got markers and a napkin. I'm gonna draw X's on it, two colors. Now, if I notice this thing turning purple, I've got water in my box. We got two boards this time. I got the one I made, and then I got the one that's a kit that you can put together. I printed a shroud for it and some water pickup lines. We got that going on, so I still DIY some things. We're gonna be testing it on just 6S. This motor is designed for 12S, which is like 48 volts. Three. One, take it off. Oh, that's a no. We are now 48 volts of juice. Don't see what happens. Juice. Double juice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. It's so much more powerful. It's working. Get on plane. It's so hard. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> box from Amazon. Highly recommend it. It's very waterproof, especially with the total boat, total seal. It, it works great. This is not wet at all. There you go. You're doing it. I'm flying. Woo! Stall, stall. Woo! <laughs> transition to the stand, you don't want to be in the air. You want to be in the water when you transition to the standing. Looking good. Looking bad. is just about as hard as the one I made it. Somehow, I think the slingshot one with a shorter mast might be actually a little bit easier to ride. However, it doesn't quite seem to have enough power. I think I might need to upgrade the motor. <laughs> but let's change the duct first because I think this bell shape is a little bit too wrong. It produces a lot of static thrust. However, this thing does move through the water. So I'm gonna clean up the duct a little bit. Print out a new one on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. They also sent me this sick printer. This thing is sweet. Look how fast it goes. It does all sorts of crazy things like this time lapse. Super excited about this printer. It's making these prints so much better. I also 3D printed these fairings for these surfboards that we run the cables through because I, I don't know, taping them on the outside just looks a little too janky. And that's coming from me. So day two, we're gonna try writing it some more. I think we're getting a little better at this, but this thing is just really difficult still. <laughs> it's also giving me a little bit of problems with the one I made. I think this receiver thing I installed is still not quite right. It's glitching. 
and it's glitching in a bad way where it's running away on its own. That's not really a good thing. Hey. Check out these serving dogs. <laughs> And on my third and final day in Florida, I actually really didn't have a whole lot of time to test either of these things. We finally got to foil. just kind of figuring out and riding the higher performance setup. This one definitely has a lot more power considering it's running on 12S or 12 cells. It's like 48 something volts compared to the 6S, which is the 22 volts of the one I did. It's still incredibly difficult. Like if I haven't mentioned how difficult this is, like I'm envious of the people I see doing this because they make it look so easy, but this is not easy by any means. I'm looking forward to doing more of this, However, I think the DIY buy is the winner in this case if you're a super beginner and you don't really know super what you're doing, but you do know something is electronics. I would definitely recommend the Foil Lab version. I'm not giving up just yet. We were actually successful in making a complete DIY electric setup with some 3D printed junk, and it worked actually really good. Like this propeller was generated with this B-series generator that I found online. It seemed to work really well. I might try using a three-bladed variant in the future. However, I think this motor is a little bit overloaded as is. Maybe I'll go double and put two motors on one of these in the future. I also want to try designing an actual flying wing board so we can get rid of this fuselage and this tail section and just go with one wing with reflex on it. Because I think that'd be really cool if I can 3D print one of these things for reels and just with minimal fiberglass thing and strength and all that stuff. I don't think it's a good idea to make one of these completely from scratch if you've never tried this because it's like trying to build an airplane and also learn to fly the airplane at the same time. I think I'd rather buy a working airplane and just get inside and go flying off a cliff because at least you get off the ground. I mean, you might crash. So buy a surfboard that has the wing and everything on it. You can actually get them pretty cheap. Like I've seen some on like Facebook Marketplace for like 500 bucks. And then print out the setup. If you really want to be dirt cheap about it, bolt it to the full board and then you have your own working setup. It's worth noting, only do that if you're lightweight. I weigh about 150 pounds or so. This 6374 setup is going to be adequate for you. If you weigh more than that, maybe do the DIY buy. I'm also probably gonna explore more foiling motor setups because I got some of these really big motors here. $50, $300. I have this really cool other trick foil board setup motor, but look at this thing, it's massive. I don't want that near my feet. I'll take this little one. But I think they're just too big for a beginner because they have so much power and they require such huge batteries, it adds a lot of weight to this and makes this less fun. So I'm just trying to find a setup that's lightweight that you can slap onto your board. I think I can finally put this one to bed. We've actually managed to foil this thing. It's not really a sunk cost fallacy if you don't give up because uh, I think we pushed through and we finally got something that works. So I'm happy about that. Because ever since I saw these freaking flying surfboards, it's I just think it's so cool because you're staying on a little airplane. I love airplanes. So you're just riding an airplane that travels through the water and controlling it with every little micro shift and correction you do with your body to fly this little airplane through the water. If you want any of the files to mess with with the thruster, it's available now on Onshape. This is Onshape, our browser-based CAD experience. It's free for hobbyists, and you can actually download and modify these files to your heart's content and do whatever you want with them. The step files there, so you can kind of take it and tweak it, and make it bigger or larger, or do whatever you want to it. They're available to mess with now. I'm gonna try this again in the future, and hopefully I'll suck less at it. Einstein. Surfing dog. Ha, 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 ha.